guide dogs. Previously on the journey of a guide dog, we found out about the alternative career path some of our dogs take and how they can change lives in other ways. With the creation of any guide dog partnership, in time this will inevitably lead to retirement. It's therefore important that we have an ongoing conversation over a long period of time to make sure that we have the best outcome uh, for the future of them and their dogs. When it's time for a guide dog to retire, it's very much on a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes the dog is actually indicating to us that it's perhaps time to consider retirement. It might be the guide dog owner that notices a change in the dog. Sometimes it might be a guide dog mobility specialist going to visit. Also, there might be something that the local vet might pick up in terms of the dog's health. That means that although the dog appears okay, actually physically there's a need to consider retirement sooner rather than later. Roxy is a Labrador Retriever cross. She's the first guide dog that I've had. She's been amazing. She's very quirky and she loves people. Her personality is still as lively as it was when she was 18 months old. Now that she's retiring, she tends to run around and want to play and then lie down a bit more and she will sleep a bit more during the day. I can kind of tell then that she's 10 years old. Losing her would be heartbreaking for me. But because I've got my partner and I've got lots of family around me who can help me take her out for walks and because I've got this house, so it's big enough for her and for when hopefully I get my new guide dog, the decision was made then that welfare-wise she could stay with me. When we're talking to people about retiring their dogs, we want to make sure that they're still happy in the provision that they're, they're giving a retired dog in the same way we would hope that they would do that with the working guide dog as well. I've been a guide dog owner since 1983 and I'm on my seventh guide dog, Benji. I produce radio programmes and podcasts for my local radio station here and enjoy getting out and about with my dog. My retired guide dog is Breck. He's now 12. He's a golden retriever, very faithful, very loyal. We used to call him an old colonel, which my wife describes him as, so he's always very serious and takes his job very seriously. He was a dog that was trained to work in London, so he went on the underground. He was escalator trained. We flew with him to Northern Ireland. So he'd been a very dynamic dog. Breck was coming up to his ninth birthday and he was getting near retirement. So someone from the local Southampton team came out several times leading up to his retirement to make an assessment as to his ability and his willingness to work and made it very clear that he was certainly showing signs that he wanted to retire and his gait had changed. So at that point we hung his harness up and then had to make the, the big decision as to whether we kept him on, which we wanted to do, or we passed him on to friends and family or someone else for his retirement. Sometimes it's the case, sadly, that the dog isn't able to remain with the guide dog owner and is uh, rehomed. And on some occasions, for a number of reasons, an individual might decide that they won't actually apply for, for another guide dog at that particular time. And so it's important that we have conversations beforehand to consider what other ways that the guide dog owner can continue with their mobility. And that might be through working with our vision rehabilitation specialists and improving or starting long cane work or utilise our My Sighted Guide service so that they're still getting out. I'm blind. I have a family uh, with two children and a very good wife. I play blind cricket and I work for guide dogs. 
I've had three guide dogs, a golden retriever called Huey, a curly coat retriever crossed with a Labrador called Bessie. We took her to the vet and just said, something's not quite right, but I don't know what. And upon investigation, we discovered that she'd got lymphoma. And upon the diagnosis, uh, she retired uh, you know, immediately at that point. When the dog's turning sort of seven or eight, we will ask them to visit the vet more frequently for checkups. Up until that point, it's every six months, but it, it might be necessary, depending on the dog's health history, that we actually ask them to go more often. I was very fortunate that Bessie was rehomed to a friend of mine that worked in our office, uh, guide dogs. So I knew that she'd be well looked after, but also because she worked in my office, I could see her every now and then when she brought the dog into the office. So that made coping with the rehoming of a dog a little bit easier for me, I think. My third guide dog was Mason, and he was matched to me when I had a little one-year-old baby. He really helped me to be the parent that I wanted to be. Mason was having seizures, and they started off being quite far apart, and then they were becoming more and more frequent at that point. If you go and visit the vet with a dog that is that ill, he's not coming back out, and that was really tough, and it took me quite a while to get over it. And I've got two young children who were seeing you know, our, our dog, our friend, our family member slip away in front of us. Now at this point, the vet was absolutely brilliant. They took him inside and they sedated him so that we could come in and say goodbye. And the vet also took paw prints and we gave them to the children. Our guide dogs, they're more like our children. It felt like losing a, a child, it really did. It's not just us as a guide dog owner, your whole family has to go through it with you. The difficulty has been because I tend to not go out on my own anymore, whereas with her I would be able to put her harness on and go out wherever I wanted to go. Whereas now that she's retiring, it's kind of, I don't want to go out on my own because I tend to trip over curbs and things like that if I've not got her. So the world's getting a lot unsafer from now that she's retiring. When you're working with a guide dog, it's the trust and the confidence you have in the dog when you're out and learning that she's not working and she's just become a pet is going to be the hard bit. If I need advice on anything and all through, especially all through this retirement process, because of how stressed and worried I've been, it's been very smooth and everyone's been very supportive with me and helped me learn to adjust to it. I was offered opportunity for some additional mobility training, but at the time I found it hard to accept help. But because I'd kept up my long cane skills, I was able to carry on and do the things that I wanted to do most of the time. There are a huge amount of things that you have to consider and I didn't find that easy and I think like a lot of guide dog owners, whatever decision you make when the dog retires, it's always a painful decision. But we've decided to keep him so he became our pet dog. We could still travel to work and take him with us. But when the new dog came along, the hardest bit is having that buddy with you for seven or eight years and that wrench in changing my loyalty over to the new dog, but still having the, the, the retired guide dog around and feeling like, um, you know, I'm letting him down and I'm being disrespectful to him. The dogs do have an opportunity of a, of a retirement and, and actually just to be a pet dog for the remainder of their life. The retirement period for a guide dog is just as important as its working life. Breck now spends his retirement sleeping quite a lot, so just a nice wander down to the recreation ground to play is great for him. And then we can go into the town and the coffee shop and sit in the square, and he's quite happy with that. It's sometimes a bit challenging managing two dogs when we're out and about. Benji and myself can top out at about five miles an hour when we're walking and my wife and Breck certainly don't walk at that speed. But for it together I have to slow Benji right up and quite a lot of time I will be working him in his harness and Jan and Breck will be walking behind me and around the home they just bumble around together so Jan looks after his health and veterinary needs. 
They both have their own personalities and I think it's like going out with any friends and family. It's just having them and their own characters is, is fantastic. And I just think they're a family. It's nice to enjoy the things we all enjoy together. The feelings that an owner experiences when a guide dog retires is actually like bereavement. Although the dog might even be remaining with them, those feelings can exist. And so it's important that they prepare and consider how they might feel and also what the best options are. My guide dog journey has been the best decision I ever made. I wish that Roxy could go on and work for a few years more, but she is going to be staying with me while she uh, gets to grow old and happy. Coming up next, find out how our dogs are kept healthy and happy throughout the different stages of their lives. <laughs>